Okay. That's what I initially went into doing and doing that allowed me to have the contacts necessary to go full time into copywriting like I am now. That's great. But you see a general perception about copy, uh, about writing, not, not about copywriting uh, is that uh, it is an extremely underpaid job. And at our side of the world, uh, people are paid at ridiculously low price of almost one cent a word one cent of US dollar a word. Uh, what is the scenario at your side and what is your perception about this? Is it a myth that it is a highly paid job or it is not? I think that that's extremely interesting. Even here in Canada, I do see freelancers undercharging, especially on networks like Fiber and Upwork. Okay. Um, I have actually joined a couple of Facebook groups where copywriters exchange what their rates are so that everyone is aware of what the going rate is. And so therefore people are less likely to undercharge. And our hope is that way all around the world, um, we will get less and less clients asking for that kind of low payment. Uh, because if everyone is charging a minimum price, that's far above that. It helps out everybody in the industry. Yes, definitely it does. But if somebody's starting from scratch, like let's say, I'm also a copywriter, but let's say that if I'm a fresher, uh, now I want to enter in the market, what should be uh, my mindset? What should be my expectation and how I should be uh, deciding my rates? I would absolutely look at what competitors in your niche are also charging. Um, I would look at how they structure their pricing packages so that you do not charge below that. Um, and for first time freelancers, I would recommend making a portfolio, okay. even if that's for clients you haven't landed yet. Building that portfolio will decrease your likelihood of people asking you to do free work or trying to undercharge you for your work. Because when you have that portfolio, you show what you can bring to the table and what you can offer businesses. Exactly. I couldn't agree more on this, that a portfolio is extremely important, but I will get back to this matter later. Uh, what you said about Upwork and Fiverr is that people are charged extremely uh, low at these platform. Uh, and uh, most of the uh, copywriters and most of the blog writers, they always start from Upwork and Fiverr as well. So uh, whenever we go over there, you will find things like this, that uh, people uh, are charging $10 for a 1000 word blog post, $20 for a 1000 word blog post. And even uh, <laughs> when I started uh, doing copywriting, I even wrote a 1000 sales page for only $10. That was the start. Now this is how I started. So uh, what, what do you think? Should we uh, move to Upwork or Fiverr or should we just start from making our own website, uh, what should be the better way considering all this? I think, that, I think that freelancers should absolutely do both. I think having both of those avenues open to you is incredibly valuable um, okay. and getting both of those potential client streams is very important. Um, I also started that way. I was way undercharging and it took other people in the industry letting me know how much I was undercharging to change that mindset. So I also think on top of being on those platforms, making sure you're contacting other copywriters and having that open line of communication is really important. Okay, I hope you won't mind asking you uh, that how much you were charging at start and how much you are charging seven years later now. Yes, so I started out, sometimes I would work for free. I did fall into that trap as well before I made my own portfolio. I started my business when I was in university. So okay. I went into it fresh. I didn't really have any guidance. Uh, it's not something I would recommend people emulate. So I would work for free or I would charge as little as $15 a post. Um, those posts were very long, you know, upwards of 3000 words. They would take multiple hours of research, yeah, so $15. Definitely. Um, I now charge anywhere between $30 an hour and $80 an hour, um, depending on the level of research required. Um, so I think when copywriters are determining what to charge, they need to take into account their own writing speed and research speed. As well. Okay, so uh, basically you, be, you are charging your clients according to the hourly rate rather than mm -hmm. fixed, uh, fixed price, right? I do occasionally offer fixed prices. However, most of my work is currently hourly. 
Okay, so how those hours are calculated? Because on Upwork, we have this time app, we just turn it on. I don't know how long you've been, uh, you have uh, left Upwork, maybe you are aware of this. That there is a time app in Upwork on which we just toggle that and it starts calculating our time. So how do we do it um, uh, manually? How, how these hours are calculated? I also use an app. I personally use an app called Toggle. It is completely free. Um, okay. And it also compiles all of your work by project and by month. So it's easy at a glance to see how much you've spent on any client for a given month, which is very helpful for me. Okay, so the same app will be installed by your client as well? No, I only do that for myself on my end. So uh, this work is entirely based on trust? You can lie on that. Oh, as well. No, no, no. I am um, alongside every invoice. I actually submit a timesheet generated from that app for them to review. And which cannot be tampered. No. Okay. That's, that's good. So it is a trusted app toggle. So uh, it is found in, it's a desktop app. In computer. It is. Yeah. I use it on desktop and I believe that there's also a mobile app for those who would prefer to use it on their phone. Okay, so mostly we will be working on laptop. Copywriting is not something that we do on smartphone, obviously. Now, coming to uh, the website, the portfolio, uh, uh, how one should develop one's portfolio at the um, very inception of one's career? How we can develop a portfolio? And later on, just guide us about how we can develop a website. I would recommend developing both at roughly the same time. And how I generated my portfolio was I determined the types of clients I wanted to be working for and wrote um, blogs and articles based on their content so that when I approached them, they could see at a glance what I would be offering them. And even some of those portfolio items I still use today. And what's really great about them is they never go out of fashion. You can always update your portfolio. Um, but it's a very minimal time commitment once you've already done the initial work. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, do you um, upload the Word files or you just uh, put the links of uh, the work you have done for your clients? The, the link of the client's website is given on your uh, website as, as a portfolio or you just upload the files? What is the way of uploading a uh, portfolio? In your I personally embed from a website called Clippings and Clippings is um, you drag and drop articles that are live on any other website and it generates okay. a thumbnail that you can click through to. Um, okay. So uh, Clippings is free or you can update it for a small fee and you can have unlimited portfolio items on it. So okay. I would highly recommend clippings for people clippings. that would prefer not to just have direct links on their website. Okay, so how many we can do in the free version in clippings? You can do 10 with the free version. I think 10 are more than enough for the free version because after that, this overchoice bias is there in which we, the more content, the more uh, uh, samples we provide, the more confusion it creates, I think. So uh, 10 is uh way better so uh, clippings is it a plugin in uh wordpress or what no it's a separate website but you can embed it on any um squarespace or wordpress page on your website okay so uh, clicking on the portfolio section of your website it will redirect to clippings uh website is yes. that okay okay so obviously that would be looking way better so uh, so far i have got two new things the toggle app and clippings app from you that i think this Medicine is going to be extremely fruitful for, uh, for us. Okay, so $30 to $80 you are charging. So would you uh, tell us how would you define the complexity of the project uh, that this should be my hourly rate for this? Uh, do you decide it on the basis of the niche that you are targeting or you just decide according to the paying capacity of your client? What, what is the criteria of this? Both. Usually, because I also work with search engine optimization yeah. uh, for a lot of the articles I currently write, um, okay. it's that level of complexity and how much research on the back end is required to write a certain piece. Um, okay. For example, I recently got into the niche of cryptocurrency, uh, uh, which is very interesting. However, yeah. yes, however, because it's so complex, that would be one of my higher paid articles or other types of writing that I do simply because one article can take three or more hours of reading. 
Okay. So uh, you are also doing uh, the blog posts other than um, uh, the persuasive sales co oriented copywriting. You are also doing uh, the simple content writing as well, right? Yes. Okay. So uh, here comes uh, my next question, which is also loosely related to the same stuff. What I have personally feel is, felt is that uh, uh, whenever we uh, pitch someone uh, to do copywriting, uh, their main major needs are like this. They, need, they would be needing a sales page. Even if they have three to four products, they will need a sales page. Then they will be needing some email sequences. That's it. Uh, maybe they would need some social posts for ads. Uh, this is where the scope of our services for a copy, uh, for writing a copy, uh, stops there. So, uh, how how do you tackle with this problem? Do you uh, target B two C clients, or you always target the B two C clients, uh, B two B or B two C? B two B, which regularly provide you uh, the stuff to do, like marketing agencies, the writing agencies. Who, who do you pitch uh, for this? I actually target both. However, most of my current clients are B2B businesses yeah. because you have the most influx of work. And especially for newer freelancers, it's worth considering that B2B clients usually have the most recurring work as well. Obviously. Obviously. So uh, how do you pitch those? Um, I am very fortunate to have an existing network. Uh, for example, I co-moderate a Facebook freelancers group. Um, okay. We can generate referrals in there. I have a referral system um, with existing clients where if they refer people to me, they get a small discount on their next project, which works great. Um, so I haven't had to cold pitch for many years. However, when I did, I would always cold email in a very personalized way. It's very easy for new freelancers to cold pitch without any personalization because many are focused on the volume of outreach. Mm -hmm. However, so many emails go straight in the bin if there is no reference of that personalization or no exactly. authentic interest in working with the brand you're outreaching to. Exactly. That goes directly into the spam. So we should uh, focus on the uh, quality rather than the quantity of the emails. So uh, if a certain person is starting today, should we be searching it like uh, marketing agencies, uh, content writing agencies, how, how we should search those on Google? What should be the keyword for that? I would actually recommend going on a network like LinkedIn and searching job titles from there and actually striking up conversations with people in those industries or business owners that are working on things that you find an interest in. Because the beauty of LinkedIn is that if you comment on those posts and strike up uh, even a vague relationship with the person, it is so much more effective than punching anything into Google, going to their website and sending that cold email off. So that is actually what I would recommend. Okay. So uh, pertaining to the matter of learning, uh, if one wants to learn something from scratch, and do consider this fact that English is not our first language, okay? So how, uh, what are the resources that you would like to recommend us, any YouTube channels or any books, something like that from where we should start learning about it? Well, people are already following you, so that's a great start. Um, <laughs> after you. that, I yeah. would highly recommend, um, he's on both YouTube and Instagram, and his name is Jamie Brindle. Um, he is a freelancer. Um, he's also a copywriter and he breaks the simple steps you should cover into bite-sized reels on a daily basis. So it covers things like pricing, how to manage client communication, et cetera, in a very accessible and plain language way. So I'd very much recommend him. Okay. The name you said, Jamie Brindle? Yes. Can you spell it J-A-M-I-E? Yep, uh, and then B-R-I-N-D-L-E. D-L-E, okay, Jamie Brindle. The Jamie Brindle Business of Freelance, okay. Yes. I have found it, he has got 135K followers, wow. And I'm going to be the next, so I followed him. <laughs> okay, that's great. That's a great resource. Okay, so, um, which niches you feel other than the blockchain that you have just said, which you feel have got the low competition 
and uh, what are the other niches in which you feel that a copywriter could get most of the business? That is a fascinating question. In terms of the niche that has the least competition, a surprisingly lucrative one that I don't see people target is the automotive industry. Um, right now, especially electric vehicles are very hot on the market, and I see a lot of job postings relating to the automotive industry um, that are very accessible for first-time freelancers. So I'd recommend people keep an eye out for that because it's not something I commonly get heard talk about. Um, and in terms of what brings the most work, I would say general marketing um, and coaching for myself personally has the most recurring work. Okay. Um, and that's also something that freelancers wouldn't need a lot of background in in order to write effectively for. Yeah, obviously. Coaching and the entrepreneurs, it's a very, um, not, not a much difficult target. But I am just a little bit surprised about listening the automotive industries because uh, anyone who will be interested in cars or any vehicles uh, will be more interested in watching content rather than reading the stuff. So what type of <laughs> stuff uh, do they ask you to write in the automotive industries? I, I could not see people buying, reading a sales page. It, I, it is usually sales pages. Um... Oh, I'm sorry, you cut out. No. There is a lag at my side. Keep on speaking. Okay. Yes, it is usually sales pages and they work in conjunction with YouTube videos. And actually a very fun project I had was writing scripts for those YouTube videos, okay. um, which I had not done before, but I would recommend copywriters look into that. Um, it does not require a lot of time commitment um, and it's a great thing to get under your belt, especially as YouTube continues to grow in popularity. Okay, so YouTube description uh, uh, will be required by them or the, or the video scripts you're talking about? The video script. The video scripts, okay. Okay, uh, Emma, tell us a little bit about uh, VSL, video sales letter. Who are the people who actually need this thing? and where, where it is used. There is a, a lot of confusion about this. I couldn't find uh, some good content on this matter. We I apologize, you cut out radio. Uh, you can't listen me? Can you listen to me now? Yep. Okay, I was asking uh, you about, uh, uh, how would you define a VSL, a video sales letter? Uh, mm -hmm. Because I, I have, uh, seen that there is extremely, uh, it, it is discussed everywhere, but on Fiverr and Upwork, I couldn't see that much demand of this niche. So who, who should be uh, the targeted audience for writing VSLs and what are actually VSLs? Just, just tell us a little bit about this in the layman terms. I'm actually going to be honest, I don't have any experience with those. Um, okay. I would love to have a discussion about it though and see if I could um, put any input in. Okay, okay, that, 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 that's very uh, honest answer uh, from your side. Okay, okay, do you, uh, do you use any sort of tools uh, that help you in writing uh, stuff? Any, any tools other than the one do you told me? I would highly recommend Grammarly. Grammarly is completely free. Mm -hmm. um, you plug in any of your writing and it lets you know if there's any spelling errors, grammatical errors, and also the education level you are writing at. And that's really important because if you're writing for a university, obviously they're looking for a certain standard of language. But if you're writing a sales page, um, they want something more plain language and accessible. Um, so it can let you know if you're overwriting or underwriting a certain piece. Okay. Uh, do you guys also uh, make mistakes while writing English? Uh, of course, it's, it's, it's yeah. a, a little bit uh, weird for us because we we making mistakes of preposition of on on and in and to and by that that sounds logical. But do you guys also make mistakes like that? Yes, all the time. Of course, um, I would highly recommend reading any piece of writing out loud before submitting because, okay. as we know, there are some mistakes that softwares just won't pick up on. Um, so reading it out loud can help you determine if something is flowing right. And that's something to this day. 
Okay, there. Uh, this would be final question of mine, and it is extremely important because I've been asked about this many times. Do you? How much should we fear the AI tools? We the copywriters. I personally, and this is hotly debated. I wouldn't worry about it at all. Sorry. I would not worry about AI. Why? Why? Why so? Why so? Why? I have actually tried out a lot of AI software just to determine if I should be worried. And my takeaway and the takeaway of many marketing agencies I personally work with okay. is that the lack of personalization and human touch bleeds through. So your customers can automatically tell if something is AI generated. And oftentimes, if you need something to be in depth, it's just not capable of spitting mm -hmm. out that level of research. Um, so copywriters will always have a place in marketing, even though I know AI sounds scary, but I wouldn't let that put off any potential freelancers looking to get into the business. Okay. Which tools you have used? I have used, I can't remember the other one, but my most recent one was Jarvis. Jar, um, which was recommended yeah. to me on Facebook a lot, um, but I didn't think it was worth the hype personally. Uh, I actually I have I have also used Jarvis, uh, formerly Jarvis, now Jasper, uh, and I've recently used Copy Pro, uh, Copy yes. Pro yeah. Okay, uh, I I felt that this is a little bit better than uh, Jasper, but I still felt that uh, there are so many things which uh, it cannot do but it can help us a lot, help us a lot in doing many things. It just creates a rough draft for ourselves and later on we could add our flair, our touch in the existing content and we then we can create a better thing out of it. And uh, secondly, uh, these AI tools, uh, they need a lot of training before they could uh, create some content out of it. So that uh, what I felt that the time that I'm consuming in training this software, in half of that time, I will be able to write a sales page myself. That's what I felt. So yes, uh, I had the same takeaway. <laughs> you had the same takeaway. Okay, <laughs> uh, that that's good. Okay, with that, uh, Emma, uh, I would like you to uh, tell us how uh, our community, the community of Pakistan, the community of copywriters and freelancers, how they can reach you how they can follow you. Do you have any Instagram, any Twitter, any website that you would like to promote? Just feel free to tell us how they can contact you. And after that, just uh, leave us a message. And what is your message to our entire country, uh, the 20 million people of Pakistan? What would you recommend them to change the state of their life? No pressure. Um, I, everyone can contact me at wewriter.ca or my other preferred uh, profile is on LinkedIn under Emma Sloan, the We Writer. Okay. Um, I'm always open to any questions or comments from people. And in terms of messaging, I would just love to see people get out there and embrace their passion for copywriting because there's always space for well-paid well copywriters and you deserve to be paid well for the work that you're doing. That's great, Emma. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, thank you so much for taking uh, the time out of your busy schedule and telling us all those uh, uh, fruitful tips. Thank you so much, Emma. I hope you, you I will so get much. you once again uh, for our, before our audience. And uh, I think uh, uh, th this is it. Thank you so much, Emma. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You Let so me much. express Have the profound debt of gratitude that I owe to you. Thank you so much. Take care. <laughs> okay.